All right, you good? I'm good, man. All right. And we're into a Corey. Thanks for joining the podcast, man. No problem, man. Thanks Sunday. Yeah. Christmas is around the corner. 23rd. And you're here sitting talking to me. So <laughs> I usually say I appreciate that yeah. to everyone, but like, man, I really appreciate that. No problem at all, man. No problem at all. It's a busy time of year regardless. So. Well, I feel like you're a busy guy just year round. Every, I'll tell you all, you're going to be humbled by when I say this. You're probably three or four people mentioned your name to me in the past six months trying to get you to come on oh no shit nice. well, you've just been so busy with so many people but a lot, yeah, you're man. a highly you. anticipated guest for sure nice thanks man and i don't know if it's about you or if it's about your restaurant but it's it's whatever you're whatever you're doing is working yeah i guess yeah yeah well that's good to hear nice so i got we can start um i'd like to start like when you were younger your hockey days and then kind of yeah, progress man. to wh- yeah. who you are now what you're doing yeah. now um you played junior hockey for Quebec, Montreal, and Prince Edward Island. Uh-huh, um, you were originally yeah. born in Halifax, right? Yeah, just my parents. I was, my parents still live out in East Hans, just okay. uh, like two seconds away from the arena in East Hans. They still live there. I'm so going there. you played minor hockey out there? I did, yeah. Yeah, the whole way growing up. Um, and then I ended up playing midget uh, for the subways in Dartmouth, yeah. That's sick. Yeah. It was so, nice, man. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a lot different out there now than it was when I was growing up. Like Where, East Hans? Yeah, East Hans, man. Like I the play there every here. Sunday, hockey league, not today, but... they get, So it's funny, like the only... I never skate anymore, but every... Well, last year, this will be the second time we've done it, but my parents rent the ice out there. My yeah. brother has like two kids, so we go out and skate. So like literally the one time a year I skate with like a hockey stick is like <laughs> unboxing day. <laughs> Just like toe dragging a six-year-old, trying to think I still got it. Oh, it's pathetic. You still got your skills, even though you're not on the ice? You can One, tell it's there, well, but it's I mean, like, olds. yeah, six-year-olds and my wife and my parents just, like, watch this and just, like, shoot it, like, middle of the net, like, knee height. And I'm like, yeah. He's <laughs> like, got it. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's fun. I don't skate a lot anymore, but, yeah, I still uh, I still get out there quite a bit. My parents live out there, so it's, it's fun to go out there. Did you ever play against Crosby when you played in junior? I think my last year junior was his first year when I played in PEI. And I would have been, I didn't play as an overage in junior. So I was, I was 19 and I think he's 16. I'm not sure what year he is, but I'm a late 84. So okay. I did play against him that last year. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. He dominated. And, and then drafted by Montreal. Not a lot of people can say that. No. Yeah. It was good. I was second round. That's yeah. Crazy. And there was another guy on my team. Max Lapierre was drafted same year. Really? I think. Yeah. Cause he, unless I'm really blowing that, but he, uh, there was me, there was Michael Lambert, a guy I played junior with, and, yeah. and Maxim Lapierre, who Sad. did the best out of any of us by far. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it was, it was nice. I was lucky. I would have, like, I'm a, like I just said, I'm a late birthday. If I was like yeah, me too. most of the other people, if, I, if it was my second year junior, I would have never in a million years got drafted. Yeah. Never. Like, it was just, uh, I was very fortunate to have a late birthday and then have a good year in uh, my third year junior, so... When you were playing hockey in your younger days, did you always know kind of the direction you wanted to go on? If, if hockey didn't work out, if you wanted to start a restaurant, if you wanted to be the entrepreneur type of person, did not, you know that at that young no, of an age? Not even close. No, I had no, no desire. No, didn't, wasn't one of those types of people where like, if ever it was like a, you know, it came like flip, like, do you want to go to school or do you just want to play hockey? Do you want to do both? Yeah. I was like, it was hockey. Like I had no idea. Like I would, if you would have told me I would be, the owner and the operator of a vegan restaurant when I was yeah. even any age leading up till probably 25, it yeah. would have been one of those things where you're just like, you're crazy, you know? Yeah. Like what people say all the time, but no, that was never, it was, I played hockey and that was it. And I didn't, I mean, you never really know if you're going to succeed. Eventually you get like a, you know, you get a hint like, okay, I could probably take this somewhere yeah. type thing. But I mean, you don't, uh, at that age, unless you're like a pretty unique individual who plans that far ahead, you're you just care about hockey. That's all you want to do. So, well, it's just any classic Canadian kid. It's hockey, exactly. hockey, it's hockey, like hockey, 95% hockey. of kids. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, sometimes it works out and you know, but you'd be forced to do something else in life and you just kind of figure it out. Did you have trouble with the transition after hockey? I know most people do. It um, seems like you, you figured it out, but maybe like the first couple of years, the transition was it tough. Well, no, not really. Cause I had prepared myself that from the from the aspect of doing nothing else my whole life other than playing hockey whatever i was going to do was something completely new right so it was like yeah but that's challenging to some people yeah it, it it's a scary thing for sure and i i ended up you know figuring it out but like when we when i first came home i was 
you know, like I worked at Duggars for a year. Did you? you? Know, like selling clothes, yeah. And I was super cool with that. Like I was, it had got to the point where I just knew in my head that hockey just wasn't, it had, you know, it had fulfilled its purpose in my life. Like I was just over it. Like it wasn't as fun anymore. Like it was just. That's fair. And I didn't want to stick around like a lot of guys do. Like you could stay over there until you're, there's so many leagues in Europe, man. You can stay over there until you're 40 if you want and be like a very mediocre mediocre hockey player and make yeah. a good living and just yeah. come home and chill in the summer and do nothing right yeah. but i was like eventually it's like i don't want to do this like you get dogs you're traveling back and forth and there's you know you realize there's more to life and then you get some like you're playing in germany and there's some like 18 year old german kid like trying to break your ankle in the middle of a game and you're like is this really worth this? <laughs> like is this True. is this you know like there's more to life than this so i was i was completely cool when i when i stopped playing um you know, I didn't miss it. I was, I know a lot of guys do. They're either forced to stop playing or they just, mm. they can't keep playing and they want to play. They're playing, you know, they're skating like two, three, four times a week. Like yeah. I, I haven't played a remotely competitive form of hockey since 2011, 2012. Well, whatever if you think about it, you're, you're one of the lucky ones. You chose just to stop. Most people, yeah. like you said, don't have an option and they can't find anywhere else to play and then they exactly. have to stop. Yeah. And then that causes people to miss it. Yeah, and even like, more. Even more. Yeah. And you realize you probably should have just played in, you know, some third or fourth league in some cr random European country. But yeah. just because you were playing and you love coming to the rink every day. Yeah. Which is cool. Which if that makes those people happy, then that's great. But for me, it was just like, you slowly realize it and it's just like, that's okay. You know? Yeah. Like, I've had a good run at this. You do better than most of the people who ever play hockey. 90%. Do. You can It's a super selfish thing to at the end of the day just be like angry at that situation like you can't you know you can't have that kind of you can't have that kind of outlook on under it's just going to affect the rest of your life so okay yeah so where did the whole vegan the restaurant thing come into play then so that happened uh my my last year in germany when i was playing it was in the second division in a little town called helbron where i had played my first year in germany so i played three years in germany two years in the same spot first and third year and then the second year in the first division in cologne Cologne? Yeah. Okay. I mean, played. I was terrible. I didn't play much, but I had a really good first year, went over there, and yeah. then kind of worked up to that, and then got up there, and I was just like, nope, not for me. So I just went back where I came from. But that year, a guy uh, on my team and his wife were opening a, she was vegan, and they were just opening a restaurant in that city. So it kind of just got influenced, you could say, and just was kind of there for the whole process of, of doing it. And I was with, somebody who who I started the restaurant my ex-wife basically now was yeah. there at the same time and we were just like this is all right like you know like it doesn't seem easy but like we know we we're going back to Halifax and it just slowly kind of just morphed into that and then it um, came home in 2012 looked for space for a while and then August 2013 we opened yeah and the city was really kind of lacking it, so it was it was good timing. I know a guy that works in the bank, and he gives out loans for a living, and he says yeah. restaurants is one of the most difficult uh, loans to give because they're one of the most hardest, you know, uh, businesses to run. No, there's no money. It's, no, if you're looking to, like, make money, then Jesus. So then I started a restaurant. It's, like, it's pure. I tell everybody all the time, I work so much harder now than when I played hockey. Like, yeah. it's not even, even in a physical aspect of it like it's just you're up early like hockey you think like hockey's great and everything but you think really it's like it's a couple hours of work a day you know you can but really more. work it's going through the motions exactly at some point. yeah i mean it's a job because you're getting money for it but like there's no you're not dependent on on yourself but you know what i mean and then there's a whole different thing where you're you're responsible for other people's jobs too, which is a different thing. In a way, in a team sport, you are also, you know, like you play like shit, the coach gets fired, GM gets fired. There's, there's many things that can happen. But when you're running a restaurant, you know, like if it doesn't, you have to keep, you have to keep so many people happy and you have to want to keep them happy. And then you realize at the end of the day, it's like, this is a job for these people. Like this is their lives as much as it is mine. And they'll go out and find other jobs, which I would too, you know, if, mm. if that's what it came to. But it's a, it's a whole different sense of responsibility. It's, you know, you have to be a leader in many different ways, and it's uh, it's a lot of work. But yeah, there's not uh, there's not much money in it for sure. Yeah, you really gotta you gotta be very happy waking up every day and knowing that like this could be like a 14 or 15 hour day, for, and it's not like you're getting like a some kind of reward at the end of the day other than the the satisfaction that you're like, okay, I woke up this morning and did literally everything I could in my power to do 
the best job I can at what I'm doing. So where does that drive come for from you? Is it not having a boss? Is it being independent? Is it making money on your own terms? Is it the quality of the food? Is it the, I feel like there's so many avenues you can answer it that is, question. It is, yeah, it's a lot. It's, I mean, for me, it's just you really, it all comes down, you have to like really enjoy doing it. And I think why I enjoy it so much is that it's some, it's so many different things every day and it's so many new things all the time. So there's no room to be complacent right like like hockey you go to the rink you do your best like for me it was like you go play a game you're supposed to score like you score one or two you're fine like everybody's happy and it's like sounds a little selfish to say but even if you'd lose five two and you had two goals there's every hockey player that ever plays yes you want to win but if you're supposed to score or you're a skilled player and you get two goals at the end of the game there's part of you is like well i guess i kind of did my job you know what i mean mm. but at the end of like a day like you run now it's like there is no, it's really hard to get a sense of like complete satisfaction from it, you know, because there's so many different things that happen that I've never ran into in my life before, you know, like yeah. whether it's, I mean, it's a million things. Like people see a restaurant and, and I was guilty of it before ever having anything to do with a restaurant was, you just think it just runs smooth. It's like any business you walk into, yeah. you know, like you don't, you don't realize the behind the scenes stuff, but with a restaurant, I mean, it's, there's so much that goes on, you know, there's. And especially in the kind of the restaurant that we run where that's so everything's kind of made from scratch. It's a very specialized type of food. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of labor. It's a lot of work. It's, you have to find the right staff. You have to, and for a small place, you have to make sure all that staff gets along, which we've been very lucky with. We've, we've had great people, but it's, um, it's a lot. And like, I still serve kind of in the restaurant, like every day, like that's the first part of my day from like you know, whenever I wake up in the morning till three or four in the afternoon, yeah. I'm there trying to do everything as well as, you know, serve a table that would walk in. So it's, uh, it keeps you super, super active, which I've realized I really <laughs> so, need yeah. in my life. It yeah. seems like the answer I'm looking for is like the difference between a restaurant that is open for a year compared to a restaurant like yours. It's, yeah. It almost seems like the pride of ownership is what keeps it exactly. going. Exactly. Yeah. It's is not it one of those. Yeah. It's not a place where there's a like a manager on duty and there's like an, an ownership group, you know, like if you like, I'm there yeah. and I don't, no matter how successful it could ever be, I can never envision myself not waking up and going there every day. You know, like even you have millions of dollars in the bank. It's the most successful restaurant in the world. I have full confidence thinking that like by the time like 7 a.m. rolls around, I'm not just going to wake up and be like, oh, I'm just going to go <laughs> lay in the couch for a bit or like, you know, do stuff or like, like I have to go in there. I have like not overstating it, but like obsessed with going in there and just accepting new things to do and like trying to, trying to figure them out. You That's know, cool. it's a, it's a very, it's interesting. And like, sometimes you suck at it. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you're just complete dog shit. Yeah. But you know, lower the you mic a bit hard, just so I can see it. Just lower see, it yeah, there. No there you go. Do you enjoy uh, messing around with the menu at all? Like being in a vegan restaurant, it, it must be a little bit more difficult to make the food delicious compared to yeah, something else, tough. I guess. Do you, do you enjoy that part of it? Um, I don't have a lot to do with the food. So we have, I don't cook, yeah. you know, I'll never, never tell anybody that I cook. Like we, <laughs> we've been lucky to have really good chefs. I mean, I obviously have stuff to do with it because I interact so much with customers. I know what people like, but yeah. it's a, it's a really, we walk a really interesting line because most of the people who come, like we're a completely vegan restaurant. So like no dairy, no eggs, nothing. Most of the people who come are not fully vegan, right? Like we, there's no way you could exist as a restaurant if everybody who walked through that door only ate plants all the time. Yeah. You know, like 80, 75, 80% of our customers are people who just eat everything, you know, they're dead. They're obviously more health conscious, but they're, you know, it's not like they're going home and eating that way. There's for sure where there's regulars that are, but like, so you have to accommodate to both of those groups of people, right? Like you have to make very familiar things that can resonate with like a carnivore. And then you want to make these dishes like completely plant-based ones that nobody's ever heard of before because mm. you're a restaurant and you're supposed to give people something that they can't do at home. You yeah. know? So it's, uh, it's really interesting. So it, there's two sides to it, but it's, you know, it's like any business, you kind of listen to your customers, but it's, um, there's a lot going on. Yeah. It, it takes a very innovative staff and a very hardworking staff to get, um, to get those things that people want. Uh, two things. One, I've been to the restaurant once and mm -hmm. I got the burger and a side yeah. of salad. One thing when I order food at a restaurant, I'm worried about two things. One is the food going to be good. And two, am I going to be full? And both yeah. things happen. The burger was great. Yeah. Salad was great. And I left full. Yeah. So that was awesome. Two, how do you keep a staff happy? 
Stuff you, parties? Uh, yeah, when the timing's right, yeah. We do, I mean, we're on like, we haven't had a Christmas party. Usually, I think for like four or five years now, you, Christmas party happens in January. Just because... You're so busy right now. December's busy, yeah. I mean, November's a super chill month, but then December, it's like, it's a weird... It's a weird kind of process because November, there's like a lull. There's always a lull. It's like November and February are, for us anyways, the two two worst months. So you get, November's tough to stay stay motivated. You got to do new things. You got to, you know, and then because you know December's going to be busy and then it's, you know, there's parties, there's Christmas season. But keeping yeah. staff happy, man, is, I think any boss or whatever would tell you that. But that's a, that's a thing I've talked to a lot of people about before and I have a lot of, I have a lot of disagreements with people about trying the hardest thing in the world for me to do is is to correct people or tell people what to do in a polite manner. Exactly, or Without, even okay. yeah. So like, I'm more of the the style. You have to be their friend. There's no way a business like like mine, where it's, we have 15 employees, I think. But at the same time, when people when the restaurant's open, there's four or five. So if you you can't be that like dictator. You can't, you know, like to me, like it's always, they're going to work the best and work the hardest if they see you doing it. Like, I don't so want to be by example. Exactly. Yeah. And for me, the hardest part is correcting them. But I think generally you, if you're doing your job as, as an owner, as somebody who's hiring people, you want to represent your company and you want to be actually like good people, they're going to figure it out. Like yeah. we're not, you know, like it's a very, very tight knit, family situation yeah um the kitchen the kitchen's a little different than front of house because there's just there's so many restaurants in the city like for the size of it, it it's insane and for us to have a really specialized menu that takes specialized skills for most yeah. of the chefs there there's some turnover there like most restaurants have you know people are in and out the door every day yeah um and that's where you you rely on good people like like a head chef to kind of contain that part and control that part because yeah. if it was and i look after more of like the servers the front of the house who are there's four we have four other girls five other girls yeah um who work and we we haven't had we've had them all for over a year which i think in a restaurant is rare very rare yeah, yeah. and they're all like best friends outside they hang out all the time there's like we have group chats and everything and it's gotten to the point where it kind of crosses like that you go through times where it's like, okay, they're new and they're kind of like feeling you out. And then it goes through a time where like, okay, he's my boss, but he's working with me every day. So yeah. like, I don't know what to do. And then it gets to the point where you're just so comfortable with them and you're so used to being around them that if they do something wrong, you, you know exactly how to tell it to them. And it's not, and usually it's never by scolding them or like saying anything like that. Like I could never do that. You have to, as long as they know you care about them and they're your friend and they care about you personally, mm -hmm. then it's, I found it very easy to keep people happy the tougher part is when you know you have to say something or something you have to ask more out of them which is part of life and they all get that so whenever yeah. it does there's never there's never like an issue with it so it's it's really it's lead by example in my case but you have to you have to care about them as people and you have to be you have to be friends with them, especially yeah. in a small business. Well, it's sure. interesting from a perspective of being a hockey player at such a young age, the communication level is huge, but it's very firm. Every second word that comes out of your mouth is fuck shit, bitch. Yeah. It's, it's very, uh, yeah. to the point. There's no, yeah. there's no soft spot. Yeah. And you know, when I was done with hockey and I, you know, I, I went to school and I was in group projects and you, you have to kind of take a step back. You have to be patient. Obviously you're yeah. not going to drop the F bomb every two seconds yeah. when you're trying yeah. to get a point across, but there's definitely an element of, of patience and you have to be a little bit more softer and yeah. you have to but yeah. with all that being said the fact that you played on a team sport for i don't know how yeah. many years 20 years yeah. you played hockey for it must have done something in order for you to take charge and lead a staff and, yeah. and and be able to to give direction well yeah exactly yeah and i was never the kind of like i was never a i don't know if i would have ever been a captain of a team but like i was never like a raw but, even, raw. but it doesn't even matter you just learn so much you're in a dressing room with 20 guys yeah and you don't realize it at the time but then when you can step away from it whatever you know five ten years later oh, yeah. like that really taught you a lot oh you yeah know? like there's there's a lot of life lessons to be learned from it and i mean now i work with pretty much probably 80 90 percent women but yeah i just we've had <coughs> we've had male male servers in the past and i have no idea why but they just never work out just never work out and now I've had the same group and it's like we all get along so well and we know what everybody has to do and there's not a lot even on super busy nights where things can be hectic and you know in restaurant terms yeah. that it's you know there's not a lot of 
we have to do this, we have to do that because, you know, I've been very lucky as far as far as staff goes and not putting a ton of energy into always looking for new people, always, you know, trying, feeling like you're never satisfied with it. So it's uh, Do you do the hiring? Uh, for the front of house, yeah. For like servers, yeah. So what are you looking and for then, in a resident? Oh, sorry, keep going. No, it's like a back of house I have... I have a say in it, like I'll sit in there, but it's like, ultimately it's up to, to the head chef who's, you know, and that's part of their, their responsibility. It's like, they're going to be working with them more. So I have to put trust in them to be like, okay, this person's going to fit in. So don't, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want mm. to, because you're still running the business. Yeah. But when you are hiring, are you actually looking at the resume or are you actually trying to have a conversation with the person to understand who they are? Or is it references? Um, or is it no, all three? it's not a lot of references. To tell you the truth. I don't think I've ever pretty shitty to say but i don't think i've ever called somebody's reference on so what is it then just it's you just you got to judge your character yeah and it's like and that kind of goes back to hockey like you see so many people on so many teams throughout the years you just you can kind of pick out like uh, yeah i don't know like yeah. i don't know if i'd like want to be around you if it like was outside the rink it's like yeah. nothing against you i just don't think we don't gel and that's not going to work if you're working in a restaurant with a hostile two, three environment feet. yeah exactly in a stressful environment too which is the thing so you definitely look at the resume and like things will jump out at you like you know if they've worked in a busy restaurant you know that's always a plus because you know yeah they can juggle things they're used to being even when it's busy and things are going well it's still just the nature of it it's still a, a stressful environment because people it's customer people service, demand right? things yeah, people yeah. are expecting things people yeah. are giving you money to make their night or their day yeah. the best it possibly could be. So it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of, usually only whenever we're trying to hire somebody, we might interview two, three people maybe. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty, you're wrong sometimes. Like everybody's wrong in life sometimes. Sometimes you blow it, but it's, um, we've been pretty good, but you can, it's usually, it's usually interview and just the feel. And it's nice enough to have a small enough staff. We just kind of do them not in the restaurant, but there's like a little lower level to a restaurant. Yeah. So usually if that happens, then half of the other staff is going to see them and they can get a feel from them. So it's a very, you know, ultimately like me and the chef will have the final save who we pick, but yeah. like their opinion, their first impression more so than, you know, cause they can't really form an opinion. You meet somebody for, mm. you know, they five, 10 minutes. I can for sure talk to them for 30 or 40 minutes, but that first impression of just those first five minutes tell a lot about a person, man. Yeah, like that's true. It's a, yeah, it's an interesting, and that's something that I had never, you know, that's not something you envision yourself doing. Yeah, that's <laughs> when, funny. When you're just trying to score goals growing up as a kid. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's a, Yeah, it's an interesting life, man. It's, it's, it's funny how things that you're saying all kind of relate back to the first 20 years of your life. I just, yeah. it's just all your skill sets come from everything that you're telling yeah. me right now, judging, not judging people, but being able to read a character yeah. and things like that, working yeah. in hectic environments. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the location of your, uh, of your restaurant yeah. in, the, in the, I guess you can call it North End. It is. Yeah. It's right by line and bright, right? It's stretched out. Yeah. Well, what's the name of the street again? Uh, it's Gricola. Gricola. Yeah. Such a great, cool up and coming yeah. street. I shouldn't even yeah. say up and coming. It's been up and coming for yeah. years now. Yeah. Um, do you like working in that location? Do you have a good relationship with other restaurants? I know line and bright just shut down. You did. I yeah. did. I enjoyed that place, yeah. but you know, do you have a good relationship with the Very, other restaurants yeah. around there? Very good. Yeah. yeah. It's super cool. So still like line and bright did shut down, but the same people on local source who is a guy named Sean. And I mean, Sean, yeah, okay. you see him every day. Yeah. Like you see, you see those people every day and it's, uh, like the brasseries right there. Yeah. Um, like there's a liquor store across the street, Cycle Smith. Like you, even if you're not trying, I'm not like the most, like I don't usually go out of my way to make like a lot of friends, you know, just due to lifestyle. But like you see people all the time, like you can't help but get to know them. You can't help but like, yeah. close, you know, like the, the people that work at Cycle Smith across the street that like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm walking into a bar when I walk in there. It's like, hey guys, good to see you again. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, you're here again. Or even like the cashier at the liquor store when we run out of stuff and I got to run across the street to get it. It's like nicest people ever. You don't know a thing about them, but like your interaction with them is just so I love that nice compared to if I drive out to like Tantalan and go to the liquor store and you just, hey, there you go. Mm. Like it's a completely different, it really affects your life in like a lot of different ways, but it's a, it's a really cool area. It's, yeah. um, it was kind of sad that that line and bright shut down but i mean i love that place it was great man great oh spot. my god that the first Coffee. year first year they were open man like they opened not long after us and it was just like it was just like the classic like watering hole how's that for a slang <laughs> you know like after work you go over and you jesus fuck, 
I had so many old fashions at that place, like just by myself at the bar and like, not in like a pathetic way, but like, you know, like at the end of a long day, yeah. you want to feel like a man, like go get a drink of whiskey, <laughs> and like just stare at the wall. Yeah, it was a great spot, but Stillwell's going in there now. They're opening Whoa, up. Whoa, yeah. are they moving from Bra- uh, Barrington? I don't think, I do I don't, I don't think, no. So now they're going to have three locations, the garden, Brandon, yeah, the garden, and, and then this there. one, yeah. I think it's um, like a pub style. I don't know. I, don't, I just know that they, I saw it on, I mean, I obviously saw them looking at space a few times and then I saw it on, uh, the shit is it called? Like Halifax Retails or one of those Instagram yeah. accounts that like yeah. does that. So, which will be awesome. Which oh, it's be, a great spot. Yeah. Oh, they're super nice people. It's, yeah, it'll be, uh, and awesome. that's a really cool space. It's, I feel bad for Lion and Bright because it's a really, it's a big space like it's a big open space and it's a rent must be high there rent yeah it would be a good rent and it's like it's it's kind of unique the the kitchen space to it is not gigantic but it's a gigantic space so it would be hard to do like a I see what you're compared saying. to like if you've ever been in the brasserie like a yeah. grocery brasserie like you go back there the kitchen's like just gigantic it's like yeah. the size of your house, you know yeah but the actual seating space isn't really all that different to you know line of right which would have had a so you have to do something with it and i think like offering food and then obviously beer a place like Stillwell that's so that's so chill and so yeah. nice is uh is going to be really awesome for it I know. so i want yeah. to i want to talk about cycling a bit too yeah man. really cool i love you know that lifestyle yeah. it looks like a lot of fun yeah. i don't do it myself yeah. i wish i did yeah. how did that come about that i've shit man i don't know hey, and I, are you happy it's not snowing right now did you yeah, bike here i'm excited no i didn't so i don't okay. do the dark but uh but tomorrow I'll I'll be up early tomorrow morning. I always do this thing every year. It's called like the Festa Five Hundred. It's kind of like a cycling thing. You try and do five hundred kilometers between uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Yeah. And I did it last year. I tried to do it for a few years, but it's so weather dependent. It's hard. Or you can do it inside. But cycling. Yeah. Anyways, I rambled <laughs> there. But no, I didn't bike here. Okay. That's a son of a bitch of a hill to bike up. If I was getting in here, I'll do this hill sometimes. Like go all the way up to. Uh, what is that, Springvale? The light on Bedford Highway where it came up and then you meet Lacewood and you go down? I don't have no Spring. idea. Any hill coming off Any the Bedford hill Highway up, going yeah. straight up is a nightmare. Um, but no, I get in. I had always kind of had like a a little bit of an interest in cycling. Like even when I was playing hockey, like I'd watch the Tour de France or like no a way. kind of, yeah. Have you, ever been to, have you ever seen the Tour de France, like gone to Paris? No, I've never, I wasn't as much into it now as I was. Um, when I live in Germany as I am now okay. and I really wish I was because there's like Europe is the, you know, awesome. that's like one of my life goals is like to get to Europe, do one of those like cycling vacations where they give you like wine at the end of the day. They like rub you down. <laughs> it's like costs like 10 grand, like something absurd, but they Does fly it? you over and you do like, you're going through like the most beautiful mountains in the world. Like that's like one of a, that would be a nice thing to do. But I really get into it when probably a year after the restaurant opened. I would say. So uh, that's, in, that's interesting to me. Why? I needed an outlet. Like it was cool. an exercise thing. And it was also like very much a therapeutic. Get your mind off the restaurant. Type yeah, thing. exactly. Um, and like I said, like I would at the end of a work day, like that first year of a restaurant, like we then compared to what it is now is every day back then was 13, 14 hours. Like every day, like I'd serve like all day. Like we were open like 11 to nine. I'd run home. I'd like let the dogs out. And I was, working with the person I lived with at that time. And it was like, usually there's three or four people there and you're like, just you're going hard, like all the time because you don't, it's not one of those restaurants that comes from like a big restaurant group, right? Like there's, it's you, it's either you or it's you and another person or whoever you did with or however many people, but you know, you have to put a certain amount of work in. You have to do this to get this thing like off the ground. Yeah. And it, and it's a lot, man. And I'm like 14 hour days. It's a lot. There's still some of those. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot. And it's, what's crazy is you just, you enjoy it, but you also accept it. Like, you, like I just wake up in the morning, you're like, all right. I know what I got to do. I'm getting home at nine o'clock. Yeah. I'll get home for a couple hours in the afternoon, maybe like take the dogs for a run or take them to the park and then I'm going back. And but there's so many things that happen. You just, time does not go by like slowly, you know, like those days like fly by. Yeah. And you're like reminding yourself to eat, you're reminding yourself of that. But then when they're over... I would go to Lion and Bright and just grab a drink. Like, I would go home. Grab an old-fashioned. Yeah, just to, like, calm down. And then eventually, like, after... Not even calm down, just to, like, relax, you know? Enjoy and, life. Like, and just be alone. Or, like, just... Because you're dealing with people all day, you know? You're dealing with a couple hundred people all day. There's... You're dealing with staff. You're dealing with this. Like, it's a completely human thing to just kind of want to be by yourself. But yeah. eventually get to a point where it's like, Jesus, I'm like... Five or six times a week, I'm coming over and have, like, a couple of drinks. And by no means am I, like... 
you know, saying like I was drinking too much or like you're like an alcoholic or something like that. But it just got to me for the point where it's like, I think I need to like find something else to do here to like take my mind off stuff. And then for whatever reason, I just went to, to Cycle Smith, which had just moved across the street, their new location. That was whatever it was, 2014, probably 2015. Mm. I just bought a bike and just put like a credit card and bought a bike <laughs> and just started like slowly and slowly, like really, and always by myself, like just go out and wake up at like stupid hours in the morning and just go out. And it wasn't like a, th- it never felt like I, like I needed to do it. Like I was running away from something, but you just, I always felt better afterwards. Like, like mentally everything. or physically or both, both. Both. Yeah. Like you get a lot of thinking done when you're there, but there's also most of it. You're just not thinking about nothing. Do you listen like, to music or podcasts? I do. I listen to music mostly. Yeah. Um, I always have headphones with me. Uh, sometimes I don't listen to anything. I just like listen to the sound of my bike. It's yeah. like dorky as that sounds. Yeah. Or like if you're in the middle of nowhere, you just, you just listen to nothing. And like a lot of times there's thoughts that go in your head like, oh, I have to do this today. Like if I do it in the morning, like you get ready. But then a lot of time it's just peaceful, man. Like it's just, yeah. you know, and you're exerting yourself. And I think that was the physical side of it is, again, with the hockey thing, you grow up playing hockey, you always have somebody telling you what to do. Your whole life, it's the coach telling you to do this. Even if you disagree with what they're saying, you still have to do it, right? Like I was never the guy, I was never a guy that would like get in spats with coaches or, you know, think it's like my way or the highway type thing. Yeah. So it's nice to go out and just like push yourself and just be like, okay, I'm going to go out and like just demolish myself today by myself in the middle of the woods, biking as hard as I can at like seven in the morning. And I would get home at like eight in the morning after doing like, whatever it was, like 40 kilometers or whatever. And I would just be so excited, like get in the house, like take the dogs out, shower, and then like almost be like running to work. And I like noticed like a huge difference in my life. And it made like so many other things a lot clearer. And it teaches you, teaches you about time management. Cause it got to the point where I like doing it so much. You have to like plan it, you know, it's like the night before, like tonight, like I'll go home. Like I said earlier, like I'll go tomorrow morning. Like I'll have like get everything laid out and like know exactly what I'm doing. So essentially I can just wake up in the morning and like just zombie walk to the coffee machine, turn it on and then just start getting dressed so I can be out out of the house in like a half hour. It's uh, it's taught me a lot about time management and it's just, it's taking, it's, it's just doing something really beneficial for your body that also is just beneficial for your mind and it just gives you a lot of clarity and it's, you know, you can, there's a lot worse habits in life that you can have. Yeah. So I thought it was cool how you said someone's always telling you what to do in hockey. I never thought of that. Yeah. It's, You're always being coached. There's yeah. always someone telling you chip pucks, pass pressure, four check, back check. Yeah. Do this, do that. I never thought of that. Yeah. There's always a coach telling you what to do. And it's always somebody different, right? So you go through so many like people, like from one year to the next, if like a coach changes or whatever. And like, if you don't, agree or necessarily like there's a lot of coaches that are just complete fucking psychopaths right like just a like couple take it yeah like like there's nothing else that matters except like that rank like that arena is the only thing it's not like family it's not friends it's not like if you had a dog if you had like if you want to you know if you want to walk to the rink they think you should drive because you're going to be tired like it's insane and eventually just when it's over you're like oh now there's nobody there to motivate you or to tell you what to do. Then you kind of, it's like, okay, well, let's see like kind of what you're really made of is like a person. And when there's nobody yelling at you what to do, it's like, how much can you motivate yourself to make yourself better in any aspect of your life? I think you just made me realize why I like this podcast so much. Cause there's no one telling me to do it. No, you I'm dead serious. You yeah. It's, um, I've always known I'd like it, but it's a really, yeah. And like, I mean, even if you're, you're playing a team sport, there's still like, there's still a hierarchy. Like there isn't anything, right? Like there's, yeah. you know, somebody's, somebody's telling you what to do. If you, if you think you're a goal scorer, but the coach puts you on the third or fourth line, like you're not going to be a goal scorer, no. but you got to listen to him or you're you not going to be a hockey player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, there's a lot of give and take. And then once there's nobody to tell you what to do, I was just like, okay, now I need, I need to be challenged some in another way and I was like why not do it you know fitness wise which is what I've always loved doing like cardio I've never been like muscly or I've never like wanted to go to the gym and like just fucking like pump weights yeah that has never appealed to me at all so it's just like I can do this on like this (laughs) super cool bike and I can be by myself and I can like listen to whatever music I want and I can do it whenever I want and if I want to go for an hour longer than I thought I was I was like 
nobody's telling me to go to work. I know I have to go to work, yeah. but like if I want to go like cruise around for another 20 kilometers and be like 40 minutes later to work when we like, and it's funny cause I'll panic cause we open at 11, but I'm there every day, but like eight. So what do you do so from like, eight to 11? Jesus. I'm like, I, yeah, I could like I could get in there at nine 30 and still get everything done that I need to do. But it's a game where you tell yourself, it's like how much you need to do. It's like, okay, like slow down, like take some time, like yeah. do this. It's going to make you feel better, but there's nobody telling you what to do essentially. So it like teaches you a whole other way of life. Where's your favorite place to bike to? <clears throat> um, I do. I really like, I mean, Purcell's Cove Road is super nice. Like you got a little loop where you go, like it ends at Pavia and you come back in on uh, Herring Cove Road. Like the rotary, like when you go yeah, up you there. Go yeah, you go through the rotary yeah, and then yeah. you go up and then you Pass take like Spryfield. left. Pass Yeah, exactly. You can go, you can go straight out that way and then it's just a big loop essentially. Okay, or I know what you're, sorry, some, yes, I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah, and then the there's end. the other loop that you can do that goes out to by, like by Sambro, by like Crystal Crescent, where that yeah. little convenience store is and that's a big loop. Those are like the popular ones for cyclists, but yeah. I think it's mostly because there, there's a lot of hills, like it's, it's hard, like it's a, like you can make it like a fucking grueling workout like if you want to yeah um but i haven't those are nice i like to go over to dartmouth like i one that i really did this year is like i was going out to my parents to east ants you biked out to east ants yeah i'll do that often it's not that far, like just take waverly road the whole way it's like 50 and a waverly little bit kilometers road. you know the one that goes like by lake binoc if you follow that like the whole way it goes yeah. out by like oakfield golf course and then it comes out like by the big stop in enfield and then you can just take that, like, it's like old highway, I guess okay. is what they call it. Yeah. yeah. And it goes right to my parents. But so a lot of Sundays in the summer, we, me and my wife will go out to my parents' place for like dinner. And then on certain Sundays when it's like, I can kind of like plan for it or book in advance, I can take a lot more time. So I went out through like, um, it ended up being like 130 kilometers. If you go out behind, like, you go to like Porter's Lake, like through Lake Echo. And then there's like a road that goes back into like Muscadabit and it goes like all the way back around. Um, and there's just nobody out there. Cool. You know, like on a Sunday afternoon, like there's literally like, um, like there's nobody. And I'd never, I grew up like relatively like close to there. Like East Ants isn't really that far yeah. from there, but it was like, I'd never, never seen that part of like the province before. And not that there's much to see, but you're just like, Jesus, it's like, yeah, it's like nice out here. It's That'll like happen peaceful. to me from time to time in a car. I'll be driving up. I've yeah, been on like, the street. Like, yeah, where? they've been here for like 30 years and they have no idea. Yeah. So, and that's, that's what I like about biking too, is you can get a lot of places that you don't, no, you would just never see. even think to go. Yeah. You said so, that so. you want to go to Germany and bike somewhere is, in Europe. Yeah. Europe? I would like to just for the mountains, like the mountain, like any, anybody out, who kind yeah. of bikes seriously will be like a mountain would be ideal, like climbing a mountain. And then you get to go down the other side, you get to see the view, which is like what all it's about. It's like a good, you know it's the it's better than just cruising along on like a flat road did you so when you there. played hockey in europe did you own a bike and do that i did but just as like a commuter but like just to get just to, to the get rink, point. You oh know? you bike yeah. to the rink yeah i mean it wasn't very far it was like a little town in germany it was maybe like five minutes but yeah i biked to like the gym a few times and like i remember one time it was like like i'm sure people have said like the way europe works like every week's the same like you got a game friday sunday and then like monday gym tuesday gym practice like it's just it's a completely different thing and i remember one time when I played in Helbron, we had like a gym session on like a Monday or Tuesday morning and I just got this bike and I was like, there was nothing that was going to stop me from riding it and not it like, wouldn't compare to like what I do today. Like it was just like a point eight type B type thing. It's like a fixie bike. Like it was white. Like I look like muscle. Look What's like a fixie an bike? idiot. So it's just got one gear oh, where the gear like, doesn't like, so, like okay. you can't coast. Like, the, like it looks like, uh, I get it. It looks ridiculous. It doesn't look like the bike I have now, but like nothing was going to stop me from like riding that bike the next day. And it was like pouring rain. And it was like probably like 10 kilometers to the gym or something. Uh, and I biked there and just showed up like just fucking soaked, like drenched, like mud. Like I didn't have like a fender on or anything. Like it just, this was my last year. And at that point I was like, I just want to ride my bike. I was like, I don't give a shit. If somebody gets mad at me, like. Was the coach mad at you or anything? Oh my God, he was losing it. Cause I was soaked and it was like. So what? Middle of the winter. Yeah. And he was like, you're going to get sick. I was like, I'm not going to get sick. I was like, I don't think I'm going to get sick. I was like, I don't know. I had a great time coming here. I was like, I brought like extra clothes. I was like, I'm sick. fine. I was like, I'll just go change and then I'll do my workout and then I'll bike home or I'll tell somebody that I got to drive home and I'll still bike home just so you think I got to drive home. That's funny. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, but yeah, I would like to go back to Europe. It's just so much, the scenery is so much different, right? It would be close to home. I would love to go to Cape Breton and do like a lot of people do the Cabot trail oh, like, yeah. and do it like aggressively do it in like sick. a day or two. Some yeah. people, a lot of people do it in a day, yeah. like a little over 300 kilometers, but you wake up at six in the morning and you got nothing to do until, you know, 10 at night or six at night, however long it takes you, you can do it. 
The only mm-hmm. thing I can come close to compared to getting up early and going to do a physical activity is surfing. I did it once by myself. Uh, I used yeah. to, like I said, we were talking at the Prince George yeah. Hotel. There was a guy I used to work with. He was yeah. Australian and he was a big surfer. Yeah. And I was like, man, like I want to come surfing with you yeah. once. So went out. Ter- I was terrible at it, yeah. but for so some hard. wake what's that so hard oh so hard <laughs> you know what happened i got caught in like a, a current oh. so I, I almost shit my pants i was so scared but nobody wants to happen to them in the ocean you yeah essentially <laughs> um but for some reason waking up at five in the morning and being at the ocean by 6 a.m with the sun coming up and me in a wetsuit freezing my ass off in yeah. the water trying to surf yeah when i came home on that drive so, i don't know it, it was just a feeling a, i'll never forget yeah i get there's it's funny because like Sean, the guy who owns Local Source and he did Line and Bright, he surfs too. And I've just met random people who surf just from however. It's not like I hang out with surfers, but everybody I meet, it tends to be like the same feeling as like, as I get from cycling, you know, it's like, a, it's like a solitude thing. It's like a, it's yeah. like a peaceful thing, you know, it's like you're, you're on this machine essentially, you know, whether it's a surfboard or a bike and you're just there's nobody to tell you what to do man you're all by yourself and it's like yeah i think yeah. that's a part of it knowing that yeah. everyone else is asleep i i honestly do the fact that i was awake and no one was on the road yeah no one was out there the sun was coming up there was something about that yeah. it was kind of cool to me yeah it, it is was, it's it's like it's everything it's like a different smell at that time of yeah day. like you leave there's something about like leaving your house when it's dark and then you get back when it's light and you're like this seems backwards to everything yeah. like as a kid my you would kill to sleep till like noon Remember yeah. like you sleep in, you'd have anything to do. You'd wake up at like 10 and have like a bowl of cereal and then like oh, go back man. to bed. Being a hockey player, you got to be a good sleeper. It's all you do. Yeah. You play hockey and you, you sleep. It. Yeah. That's all you do. And I never, I used, I used to never be able to, I used to not sleep like at all. I used to stay up late at night, but now like, dude, my wife will just rip me apart. Like as soon as I hit the bed, like you're so cold, gone. like gone, like it, like it would take like a massive earthquake to like wake me up. But then as soon as the alarm goes off, it's like you just feel different, you know? And it goes, it's so many things is you take care of, you know, if you know, you're going to be like physically exerting yourself to your max every day, you, you quickly realize you have to take better care of your body. And In you what have sense? To sleep. sleep, like eating, sleep, stretching, eating, you do yoga at all? I don't no? no. I should. I want to, cause I'm terribly, uh, like the least flexible person in the world. Just essentially from playing hockey my it's my hip like from playing hockey my whole life yeah. i ran quite a bit in my life like i enjoy running and then biking like three worst exercises like for your hips and like the yoga thing though i i've tried like i respect it i know what everybody gets out of it but like yeah. for me sitting there like in a room for an hour like anybody who knows me whether i'm stretch like i know it's hard like it's challenging but yeah. i i need to have some kind of movement with like what i'm doing point like yeah. I see what you're saying. And I've done them and it's hard. And I've left like, oh my God. I was like, that was miserable. I was like, that was so hard. That was yeah. harder than any bike ride. But it just, I just feel happier when I'm up. So I'll try and stretch at home and stuff. But yeah. like, it's hard, man. But the biggest thing is like drinking water. As stupid as that sounds. Drink water. Like my greatest adult lesson is like, just drink as much water as you possibly can. Okay. And I've, it's, I was never big on like nutrition or hydration or anything like that while I was playing hockey. It's just... Mostly because you're kind of being told what to eat all the time. Like, you don't really have a choice. But now it's just like, drink water, man. Like, it, it's yeah. it's crazy. It takes care of so many problems. It's insane. I was talking to my dad the other day, and he's 55, 55, 55, 56. Mm-hmm. And his whole life, you know, he lifted weights, played hockey, yeah. played in the queue. And he's like, man, like, I'm just sore as fuck right now. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like he's just yeah. sore. He eats healthy. Like, he's a yeah. in shape guy. Yeah. But he's just like, I'm sore. Yeah. So I took that and was like, you know, I got to change something up because that's all I do. I just lift yeah. weights and I yeah. play hockey every now yeah. and then. So that's a point. Like when I'm 55, I don't want to be sore. I want to be flexible. Yeah. I want to feel good. So yeah. I don't do yoga, but I'm looking for something to kind of, I, but I do yeah. enjoy lifting weights, but I, I definitely want to do something different. So when yeah. I'm 55, I'm feeling all right. Yeah. It's, I know like, that's I the one thing I, age scares the shit out of me. It's crazy, man. Yeah. It's not that we're old by any means, no. but like you notice it like, oh yeah. <laughs> you notice oh, things yeah. when you get like even mid 20s like you you notice stuff but like i kind I, of enjoy it i enjoy noticing it and then yeah. i enjoy fixing it yeah i, I really you like i'm much more in tune with everything that's going on yeah like some people yeah. like oh i'm getting old i can't do this i can't do that and it's like well fix it and yeah, i love that can. fight yeah i like, love don't that complain fight. yeah, yeah. Like, that's don't you know something's wrong yeah like there's obviously something wrong like 
fix it. Yeah. You know, like nobody's going to come fix it for you. Yeah. It's the fight. Yeah, exactly. You and found you, biking. It, you, you like that. You enjoy it. It helps your yeah. lifestyle. Some people like surfing. Some people like yoga. Whatever There's is, so many man, different things you could do. Go to the mall and walk around for two hours before it opens. Like whatever you're happy with, like yeah. just go do like who cares. And I think that part of that being as an adult is like, who gives a shit what people think? You know, like as a kid, you're so like, even as, even when you're playing hockey, there was always, I always felt, and I know most people do that. There's always eyes on you, right? Like there's watching everything you do, not, not just on the ice, like off the the, ice. what you're doing off the ice, what you're doing in the summer when, you know, mm. it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's the mm-hmm. first step to going anywhere in life, I think, is not caring what people think. Because yeah. if you think about it, anyone successful in this world, yeah. people talk about them. If you're exactly. rich, yeah. there's people shitting on you. Yeah. There's always you know, going to be somebody that hates you. Yeah. So, so you just, yeah. That's the first step to, yeah. I think, being yeah. someone in life. You just can't care yeah. at no. all. And you learn that pretty quick. Like, I would have never thought, you know, you'd be throwing a bunch of spandex on at like 5.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> like, making sure my blanky light's working before I, like, head out to, like, Purcell's Cove Road. It's like, yeah, it's weird. But you just accept it. And then you're just like, Phew whatever i love it yeah. i'd rather people be saying something about me than nothing at all yeah exactly or be like oh i could have did this yeah. or like eh, you know it's like yeah well whatever do you ever have uh when you go biking at night do you wear um or in the morning when it's dark mm-hmm. out do you wear reflector shit like the, uh, the not, stuff do you have I, a light i do yeah you gotta do lights you gotta do the lights um I don't have a ton of, i won't have that like construction vest on like no i like to keep it like pretty pretty um I wear a lot of black. I probably wear too much black. Is that too. safe? Um, you can get black stuff that has like that, uh, what's it called? Like 3M, like reflective material. Yeah, so okay. there's like just a brand I wear that I'll have like a shirt where it's just like, it'll look like a floating word. Like if you're coming up from behind it, like along with the light, like it's oh, like yeah. a silver and it's bright. Or I have like some bright pink socks that will glow. Like yeah. Certain things, but no, I won't like... I'm not, I sh- should be, It'd make my wife happier if I had like 19 <laughs> lights on my bike, you know. You or do like, or you don't? No, I uh, don't. Like I got a backlight, I got a front light, but like you, yeah. I mean, you can, you can never be safe enough, right? But like I selfishly am like, I say I don't care what people think, but I was like, I'm not going to throw like that reflective construction vest on to yeah. like go like, you know. That's not aerodynamic, first of all. <laughs> and I was like, I got a light. People see the light. Or I'll try and go like, and there's nobody on the road that time of the day anyways. Yeah, you know? that's true. Like, and you can't be, as a as a cyclist, and a lot of people, even that I drive by, are guilty of this. You can't be an idiot when you're on your bike, like in the road. Like you, the whole time I'm thinking, if I'm thinking anything when I'm biking is, stay to the f- as far to the right of the road as possible. Yeah. Like, don't assume that everybody's going to see you. Don't assume that, like, you're a car. Like, even s- yeah. typically speaking, like, people should see you, but you're not a car. Yeah. You're on a bike. Yeah. That if a car hits you, it's going to, you know. Yeah. There's no, there's no real second chance on, like, getting hit from behind by a car. So just, like, stay as far to the right as possible and don't think that you're more important than the car. Yeah. Because even though, like, the law might say, please give cyclists road, like, yeah. don't be an idiot. Like, move to the side of the road. Yeah. Because there's no, you can't just shake it off and be like, oh, sorry. I was like, I was a car. No, you're a bicycle. Like, yeah. You have to be really smart about it. So there's, there's certain times, like, don't, like, I won't go through the rotary at, like, anytime after like 3 30 to 5 like the way that traffic's backed up like for me to go through there on a bike is just like suicide don't be an idiot yeah, yeah. like go somewhere else like go yeah. on a trail somewhere yeah like you know it's uh you have to pick your spots but it's uh yeah you always got to think about that stuff but there's it's panic if your light runs out and it's dark and you're like Fuck. your light's not charged like, just get your right. iphone out or something put <laughs> yeah, the light just on. go on the sidewalk yeah. and just like walk at home it's like hey man how's it going and just like lie people like oh, i got a flat tire <laughs> just don't want to get buried by a car in the dark so what's the nightly routine you say so you'll be up tomorrow morning 5 a.m so you have to prepare tonight what are you doing tonight to prepare for tomorrow morning um tonight i'll i'll eat a lot of food i'll drink a lot of water so you don't do anything in the morning like drink or eat anything you just I'll go drink coffee before i go that's it so yeah so it's like it's not uh it depends. Like I'll go a lot of times I'll do like uh, like fasted exercise, which I know quite what, a few people are into. That That's mean? where like you just don't eat. Like your so your body's essentially it's not burning, it's it's burning fat okay. when you're exercising. So but no, before I leave, I'll wake up. First thing out of as soon as I get out of bed, I'll just walk to the coffee machine and turn it on or have a preset probably like on a morning like this. Do you have an espresso or a coffee? I have a coffee machine. Do you we bring have- it to go? Or do you no, I just kind of drink it while I get ready. Okay. Like by the time I like by the time like on a morning like tomorrow where it's gonna be like pretty cold like it'll like i think it's supposed to be like minus four or minus is five it? like yeah 
So it's like it'll or it feels like that anyways. But, but if then you got to think yeah. if you're biking in the wind, like it, it takes me like a solid 20 to 25 minutes. Like if I'm standing there naked to get everything like on like, like layers, a couple pairs of socks, I'll put like like tin foil under my socks, like around your toes. Why keep tin them, foil? Just keeps them warm. Keeps no the way. Heat. Yeah. It's like if you put something in the oven, right? Or you take something out of the oven and you have tin foil on it, like it stays hot. I so never thought of that. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. It's super uncomfortable when you get home because it's wet and it kind of like breaks apart. But it, it helps. You put it in, wait, you put it in between your I'll toes like, or you cover your No, whole... it's just like a little like, I'll just wrap it right around. kind Cool. Of. Yeah, and then put your sock and it like stays in place. So that helps keep them warm. But like, and then you have like shoe covers, you have like leg warmers and then different stuff. Like you usually wear like a couple pairs of gloves. Cause there's nothing worse than getting cold hands yeah. or cold feet. Like it's the worst. It sounds worst. like a lot of tips for homeless people. Like yeah, when they're layer up, cold. right? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, layer up, put as much on as you can. As long as that stuff is, you can move in it. Like yeah. it's just going to keep you warm. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. I don't like using like, Oh, it's too cold as an excuse to like not do anything. That's true. Right? I never like, thought of that either. People and when you, that. when you bike, like there is like, there's a lot of wind that that cools you off which is what makes you but at the same time like you're moving all the time like your blood's never stopping flowing right that's the that's the biggest difference about like cycling in winter i find in summer is like summer you can go and you can just cruise you can stop by a lake and yeah. you're just gonna sweat the whole time like winter like if i go tomorrow morning and i'll stop after like 30 kilometers or something yeah as soon as you have like any amount of sweat and then you stop and your body stops producing all that blood flow like yeah. that sweat turns to like ice cold water and then it's what yeah. climate would you rather bike in summer or winter Oh, summer for sure. Yeah, yeah. Be a lot more on the old sunscreen budget for a redhead. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah, you and my, you and I both know. A little fair skin. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I don't get to. I'm relatively lucky. I yeah. think you're probably. Well, I don't think we're the worst. I've seen no, people who get it worse, redheads. But yeah, I just get freckles. I tend to get a lot more freckles. I don't, I don't get, get freckles. Anything. I just get. I'm a lobster. But I've learned my lessons. Yeah, I'm you learn quick. quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. You learn very quick. I you ever been out to California and biked? Like along the coast no. there, Santa Monica? No, I would love to do that too. I want to take like a West Coast. I played hockey in Long Beach my first year pro. Did you? Yeah. What was that like? It hockey was, in Long Beach, California. It was not an ideal place for a first year pro 20-year-old to go. But that was the year of the lockout, that year that the full lockout was, whatever that was, 2004. Yeah. So there was like that big trickle down, right? So yeah. like I had been drafted and then I signed and then you're going to Long Beach in the East Coast. League. I was like, excuse me? Would you live in like, like a hotel? Where? No, they give you like, it's like these coast like they just give you apartments. They like hook you up with, I mean, hook you up. <laughs> they give you a place to live. You know, it's not, there's people in worse situations. It's not the most glamorous, yeah. usually things in the world, but they make it so you don't have to worry about anything and you can hopefully put your best hockey product <laughs> on the ice. But, yeah. I mean, it's Long Beach, California, like you know it's tough to focus I try yeah well there's a lot going on you Tons. know like it's just it's not even that you it's like i don't mean it as like you're going out every night and you're partying and like you're doing all this like that's not that was never me but there's an ocean right there like a warm ocean yeah. instead of like here like there's a beach that goes for like 50 miles yeah. you're like you've never seen it before you know it's like it's a whole new world and it's like you're 45 minutes from la you're you know like orange county is 20 minutes down the road it's like places you see on tv and even though you think you're like you're 20 and you're like somewhat grown up like that stuff's still pretty crazy to see yeah like, you know it's like a whole different world um so it was it was interesting playing in quebec how much fun was that playing in the pepsi coliseum you played there when i played in the peewee tournament oh yes so you might have who knows you might have played there when i was there but how much fun was it playing for the quebec ramparts apparently that's one of the best franchises it was 100 yeah like you fly was. to games i'm pretty sure the back yeah we might have flew a couple times back then um, that would have been 2000 from like 2000, 2002. It was looking back on it now and being part of like professional organizations and then European organizations. And then that, that is like, yeah, that's as good as you could have asked for at that yeah. time. Like they take, I mean, kind of as it should be, if you're moving away as like a 15 or 16 year old, it's not like you're going to go out in the city on your own and be like, okay, I got to go to school. I'm going to go sit this, you know, set this up for myself. Like that's yeah. not, that's not going to happen. So they take care of everything. I had like a great billet. I was there for probably a year and a half. I think it was a year and a half. I got traded my second year right before Christmas. Yeah. And uh, like practice finish in the morning. There's somebody that drives you to school. You have like a free lunch at like the, in the rink. 
like a like the little cafeteria yeah and, and i remember having lunch there like days and then the peewee tournament was in town and i didn't know what it was because i never went to it as a kid like, yeah i don't even remember know if i knew about it <laughs> and i just remember and i was like we got to the rink one day to like leave for a game or something and there's like fifteen thousand people in the rink and there's like yeah. peewee kids on the ice and i'm like yeah where am i <laughs> i was like and i was only like 15 at the time like i yeah. was really young and i was like i missed out on this <laughs> what's like, going on oh, here shit. i was like i'm going to like shearwater to play like games yeah <laughs> like you know yeah. going down to the valley and i was like there's fifteen thousand people here as a peewee kid they're probably selling out the top rink the it top was, half like of it the... was full it was jammed yeah, yeah. that was it the was... steepest top the, that rink at the top was, was really so steep yeah and it was really loud it, oh it yeah was, uh, yeah it was a uh, it was a really cool place to play they that was that was like first class the the whole way it was awesome Do you it mean, was the best place to go i think looking back and like obviously as a kid growing up here you're like oh i want to play for the Mooseheads. like that'd be great yeah but like looking back on it now like i don't i think going there would have been like it wasn't super french it was enough english where you could get by i got to go to an english high school nice. i learned french while i was there as opposed to like if you were summers like here it would have just been yeah it would have been a lot more kind of pressure there just would have been more things for a 15 year old kid to handle you know what i mean so did you ever play against brandon reed you know does that name ring a bell played for the mooseheads played yeah for i think he played in valdor yeah the last the last year i think that he played with the what was that guy's name Simon Gamache. Do you remember that guy? No. I think he had like a, something stupid, like 180 points one year or something. Like back when like, that would have been like 2000 when they beat us like 12-1 or something. I remember oh. I played in Quebec and they had like seven or eight points. Like just stupid. And you look at them at that age as like, that's a man. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. you're, you're in the same league and they're only four years older than you. Yeah. Compared to like when you turn pro and then you're playing in size that are like 38, but you're like, Oh, that's like the same kind of, yeah. I'm the same age as that guy. Yeah. But five years ago, we were like, Oh my God, who is that? I remember like, looking at the QB, like that's the NHL right there. Yeah. That's like the... when, like Ramsey Abid, when he used to play for the Moose, I was, he used to go and I was like a kid and I was like, there's, he's not 19. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that guy's 19. <laughs> I was like, no, I was like, that's not what people look like when they're 19. And you grow up and you're like, shit. Like, I was 19. 19. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't mess with the system. He was allowed to play. He was yeah. the right age. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. And then like certain time spans in life, how much things change, and then how much things don't change. Yeah. Get, yeah. It's weird, man. Crazy times. Yeah. Times fly. Yeah, they do. We're coming up on an hour here, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you coming on. No problem. Really cool it. talking to you. Thanks, man. You got a cool life. You got a great restaurant. You got a cool hobby by biking. Thanks, man. I'm gonna come in. Screen. Not next week, but the week after, I'm pretty sure. Mm, yeah, we have a new menu coming out in January. So. Oh, yeah. By the way, plug away. Like the last like minute or whatever. If you want to say hi to family, friends, give a plug out to the restaurant, oh, go ahead. Family, friend. Yeah, no, we do don't want to uh, do. We're closed until the 27th. And then we always do a big New Year's Eve dinner with like reserved seating. So those are those are available. Those are always really popular. It's like a nice. It's not like a bottle pop in New Year's Eve celebration, but uh, and then we take a couple days off and then we'll have a new. We always change our menu a couple times a year. So. The chefs have something nice uh, coming out on the 3rd of January will be open. So Dope. Yeah, man. You just get through the winter. The restaurant business is a little different in the winter than it is in the summer. So it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, it tests you all the time. So You guys got a patio out there? We do in the summer, yeah. We have like a, I wouldn't call it a patio. It's like tables on the sidewalk with That's a, a rope. Patio. That's grass That's patio. or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. It's nice. It gets sun all day. It gets incredibly hot like almost too hot to sit there and you can't shade it because the sun is like yeah it's nice though if you're looking for it might not be good for guys like me and you to yeah. sit out there <laughs> here's the thing though look when summer hits the first week first month whatever i'll yeah. just tan like i'll suck Gotta it up it. i'll burn whatever get the and base. then the rest of the summer i'll just i'll be play it smart and then it lasts us like all year yeah we're set. i still have like weird lines on like the top of my legs from yeah. biking in the summer and i'm like they everybody thinks redheads have it bad i was like you get it like yeah you just gotta it learn stays it around time. forever yeah. yeah it never goes away it's fine i think it might be like burning you like legit but like it stays there quick question about the restaurant yeah. do you guys have a big water jug so guests can fill up their water if they want to themselves no we give bottles yeah that's my biggest pet peeve i love the the self-serve water that's my thing yes i do what, this, do what you want but that's my thing self-serve oh so like if you're at the table you go up to get it yeah because i hate i'm one of those guys you who hate, hate running out and i know i just hate it? asking for service i i just feel pretentious i don't uh, like to ask for anything you give me my food thank you very much i don't like to say can i have some water i agree so, so i love when there's just that is water. a pet peeve of mine so like if two people walk in and they go to sit down the first thing that go it's two menus and a bottle of water a like jug a, big, a jug leave the jug. A jug yeah oh i thought you meant like this like self-serve no thing. they're both i don't uh, care both yeah no I, people shouldn't have to get up to get water man exactly no you need and i'm very 
very conscious of like, oh, your bottle has like an inch left in it. Let me go get a new one. Because yeah. I hate that where I was somewhere like last week and we were having dinner with like a few friends and I just, I remember just blurting out. I was like, why the fuck don't they put water on the table? Yeah. And then they bring the glass back and it's half full. Yeah. I'm like, what? Who drinks that amount of water? Yeah. At like one time. It's called like, leave the jug. Yeah. It's called yeah. like your job is a lot easier if you yeah. bring a substantial amount of water and leave it there. Like everybody's poured water. Yeah. Nobody's going to a restaurant <laughs> to like, how's your water technique? It's like, we've all poured water before. <laughs> it's like, leave it here. We'll be fine. And yeah. it's like, we can't go cook the food. Like you bring us that. Yeah. We'll bring, we'll take care of all that. But like, if you want some water, it's there. Help yourself. Unreal. Yeah. All right, Corey. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate Appreciate it, it, man. Um, Everyone listening, thank you very much once again. This is the high button. Go to all of our social media outlets. Like, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. I think I mentioned them all. We are out. Have a good Christmas, by the way. Holy shit, there's two days away. So Merry Christmas. All the best. We're out. Peace.